right, appreciate everybody joining. Appreciate everybody joining today's Zoom press conference with Coach Pearl. We'll let him make a few opening comments and then we'll take questions. Please note your questions in the chat. Thank you, Coach. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, my job is to try to get my team ready for what's coming in, 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 uh, in our regular season. And you do that in the preseason, you do that in the exhibition season, and you do that by playing the very best you can possibly play. Um, we uh, went to UAB and had a private scrimmage. Um, we could go Saturday and now we're playing, you know, one of the best teams in all division two basketball in the university of Southern Indiana. Um, I, I know, uh, I've got history having played against Stan. Um, he beat me when I was at Tennessee in my last year, at Tennessee, um, that team that Indianapolis beat, uh, at Tennessee, uh wound up beating I think it was third ranked Pittsburgh started season seven. Oh, and I think that team got ranked as hot. It was in the top 10. Um, so pretty good win for Indianapolis. And then um, Stan brought that Indianapolis team down to Auburn where we beat them in overtime. Uh, maybe my second year here. So um, Stan's got my number. Um, <laughs> if you will. Um I've played Southern Indiana um, uh, every place I've been. Played them when I was uh, when I left. You know, I played them at Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Uh, played them at uh, um, uh, Tennessee, and now playing them here at Auburn. So, um, personally, you know, I've always tried to represent USI everywhere I've been. Um, it's a big part of my coaching uh, history and my family's history. Um, I'm very proud of, uh, of the school, and I was there at a time when we grew up a lot and uh, proud to see where she is right now. And um, um, I always love the Great Lakes Valley Conference and uh, uh, really, really appreciate all that Evansville has done and to, to support USI, USI basketball, uh, the facility. Uh, I was there. A year ago, when we uh, celebrated that national championship team, and it was uh, just uh, that that facility belongs uh, in, in, in Division One. <laughs> just a tremendous, you know, tremendous commitment. Uh, I've only seen a little bit of Southern Indiana. Uh, um, I'll, so I'll give you just real quick, with then I'll answer questions. You know, Simmons looks like he could play for anybody. Uh, for us, for sure, um, scores at all three levels. Uh, the big kid that transferred from Indianapolis, Jacob, I believe it's uh, Polakovic, maybe. I hate to pronounce his name wrong. He's too good a player. Um, really, really good player. Big, strong, physical, great hands, catches everything. Um, I've got some young frontline guys that uh, will be really challenged by him. Um, uh, Rivera played a lot for him last year, and uh, you know he'll uh, he'll be back and. Uh, the freshman from Castle, little point guard, looks like he's terrific. Uh, I played against Clayton Hughes when he was at Indiana State. Uh, we played three or four years ago uh, in uh, College of Charleston uh, in that tournament down there. Great left-handed shooter and tough kid. So um, we are bigger um, than, than the USI by virtue of being in the SEC in Division I. Um, and I, I bet you, though, if you – if you did an average age uh, of, of the roster, including the starters, the only guy that's older is the head coach, Bruce Burrow. I'm, I'm wicked older than Stan, uh, but his team is wicked older than my team. I, I don't know what their average age is, but I bet you it's uh, somewhere in the low 20s. <laughs> and uh, we've got some, we got some good young players, but uh, uh, that's going to be a challenge for us, their, their experience and their physicality. So looking forward to having Stan, uh, looking forward to having some of the Four players that played for us uh, come down. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a a little bit of a tribute um, before the game, um, and uh, just just uh, maybe take a look at some old pictures of Coach Pearl in dark hair without any facial hair, and Stan Gerard out in his uniform. And um, I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, some folks from the varsity club um, who will make this trip down there. We still got a lot of friends. Uh, in Evansville, 
And uh, uh, so we look forward to seeing, seeing, seeing some old friends this weekend. Coach, we'll start with the first question from Brian Stoltz. Bruce, you talk about preparing your team for the season, but especially with non-conference games, with all the hype about your team being in the top 25 and Jabari Smith being in, being one, maybe one of the top draft picks. How do you get it in your players' heads that they're going to get the best shot from every team, uh, in, especially in non-conference, every night uh, that uh, kind of get, prepare them for that? Well, even, even with our scout team, um, you know, when our scout team's excited about playing, and I'm talking about our non-scholarship guys, and maybe I give them one or two scholarship guys, and we're clearly the better team. The team that's more excited usually is a team that winds up having a better practice and winning. Um, I know how excited Southern Indiana is going to be uh, because, you know, just like they were when they played Indiana and Purdue and Butler and Evansville and, you know, understand that. Uh, my guys will know how good they are. And, and, and um, if Southern Indiana is not the most excited team in the building to play, and we are, then that gives us a better chance to play well. Morehead State, University of Louisiana Monroe, uh, South Florida. Um, three games we play before we go down to uh, um, uh, the battle for Atlantis uh, are, are all against really good teams. Morehead State won their league. They got uh, some guys that can't transferred in uh, that were in championship programs. Uh, the stuff they run is really hard to guard. Uh, they think they could come in here and beat us, and with good reason. I understand that. That's what our guys are going to get. But if we can, I know it doesn't sound like much to our fans, but beating Morehead State, who was in the NCAA tournament um, a year ago, that's going to be a good, a good, a good win for us. It. It's not going to be easy. So the thing about playing USI on Friday is um, it'll get us ready for Morehead on Tuesday. Justin Hokinson. Hey Bruce, um, can you just talk about the impact of the four the four transfers have had on on your program coming in, and and all of them are going to make a, a big impact immediately, and and how your current players that were there have sort of accepted them in, and it seems like they've just gelled immediately. Well, I, I, Justin, I think they've really gelled immediately off the floor, which is great. I don't know how well we're gelling on the floor yet. We just don't have enough uh, body of work. Um, and I sort of say that as a challenge. And it has nothing to do with the transfers. We just got um, those four transfers plus Jabari. So five guys that are in our top nine players right now, along with four returning players. Um, we have no history to get. Um, uh, I've not coached them, but in, you know, one game. Um, we've not made any adjustments. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great challenge when you have to, rebuild a roster like we've had to rebuild the last two years. Okay. Again, going back um, when we had our really, really, really good three-year run uh, sophomores, juniors, and then seniors um, that COVID year had five seniors and a coral. And so that rot roster then last year, the COVID year was completely rebuilt. It was the youngest roster in college basketball. And then due to transfer portal and two guys leaving early for the NBA, we lost six guys off that team. So it's a brand new group. Um, and they work really hard to, 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 to gel off the floor, which is really important. But it's going to take these early games for us to figure out a way how we're going to gel on the court. court. And it's, there'll be some bumps, um, I would imagine, um, because of that. Mark Murphy. Yeah, Bruce, how close are you to figuring out a starting five to open the season and playing rotations as well? Yeah, I, I've got that. I'm going to continue to, uh, Mark, I get to you, and I'm going to continue to answer Justin's question. I, I think the guys have done great really trying because, you know, Justin will come and watch practice at times and see the guys are jumping. I mean, they are – it is seamless in the sense that you really don't know who the transfers are or who the freshman is. It's Auburn's team. And so that's a good thing when, a, when you come in and look at that and go, well, I really can't tell the difference between the new guys and the returning guys. Because the new guys that work really hard to catch up and the returning guys um, uh, have done a good job of accepting them. So just uh, I, I, I understand what your point is. I mean, I got a starting lineup. 
Murph, I, I know who I've got a starting lineup, I, or at least I know for sure four of my starters. Um, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play 11, uh, 10 or 11 guys in this, in this exhibition. I may not pay 10 or 11 against Moorhead, but we're going to play 10 or 11 in this exhibition um, because I'm still, we're still, everybody's earned it. Um, and we are still working on getting some things figured out for sure. But I'm not to the, I, 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 we've got 11 good players that have all, that have all earned some playing time. How long that lasts, we'll, we'll have to see. Thanks. Nathan King. Hey, Bruce, when you guys made that trip back to Evansville, Jeff wrote in the story that Stan told him that their offensive system was really similar to what you run at Auburn, really similar to what you ran at Tennessee, kind of the, the inspiration he got from being coached by you. What have you seen looking at that team and scouting that team that's similar to what you're running right now? Well, I mean, I think I think they do a great job in transition. Uh, they do a great job with transition ball screen. They get in a, they get in their spacing really, really well, uh, and really early in possessions. And they got a real idea what they're trying to do. Um, they'll be attacking uh, our five men in ball screens, um, and so our five man ball screen defense is going to have to be spot on, um, and that's great because we're going to see that. Uh, when you've got a seven footer and two six tens, you know, you're going to take that big guy and you're going to make him card in the perimeter. And so that's what they're going to do. Um, and so that'd be a great challenge for us because some of the stuff that Stan will do, we're going to see all year long. Um, I think the second thing about what they do is, is uh, that inside out aspect, that drive, draw dish aspect, um, the ability to take advantage of, of, um, of the, of the, of great three point shooting. Um, you know, Simmons can really, has really improved his catch and stick three point shooting. Uh, you know, Rivera can shoot it and uh, Hughes can shoot it. And the freshman from Castle can shoot. They got a bunch of guys that can really, you know, shoot the basketball. And they got a legitimate, again, this year, they got another legitimate center who can score over either shoulder. And so that I would say the inside out aspect of how we play offensively and the spread aspect of how we play uh, is what Stan would have picked up on. Justin Ferguson. Bruce, we've talked a lot about Zepp's defensive ability and how he can impact the game on that end. What do you like about him as an offensive weapon? Because it seems like he, he's done a good job kind of fitting into the, on that side of the floor. Yep, Zepp's worked really hard. He's gotten bigger and stronger. Um, and uh, he's able to get to the rim with either hand, which not many guys can do and score. Uh, he is a consistently solid three-point shooter. Uh, he's, he's a good passer. He can play one or two, uh, and he can impact the game on both ends of the floor. He is an extremely, extremely valuable piece. Um, and, um, his role has expanded some from the college of Charleston and certainly obviously the level of play night in and night out, uh, as far as the competition is concerned, um, um, uh, will be, will be up. And it's something that's the reason kind of why, why he came to Auburn. Uh, to, to, to be challenged at the highest level. And he's ready for it. Tobias Wilborn. Hey, Coach. How's it going, man? Good, Tobias. Man, good to see you again. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, you mentioned that you have four of those positions kind of labeled. Can you tell me um, which four you got picked and which position? I'm assuming point guard is the one that you're kind of still trying to figure out there, Coach? Uh, I can tell you that it's not the point guard that I'm try trying to figure out. And, no, I won't tell you who. The uh, that that fifth position is, but I appreciate your asking. Uh, uh, um, Wendell Green will start at point guard, and so uh, uh, and Zepp Jasper will back him up, and then it'll be Preston or KD. So we've kind of get that position lined out, um, and then and then as far as the other con other concern, uh, it's just the fact that we got some we've got good depth, we got good competition, and I'm trying to keep our guys. You know, I want to see. All the way up until the time, like you know, we got to play. Um, who's ready to step up? Can I follow up real quick? Sure. Um, why is it important to you and to your team to have that level of competition at that last minute to make sure it's not just a foregone conclusion, if you will? Yeah, man. It's just it's just because because we are so new together. Um, a lot of teams, it is what it is, and that's what it is all season long. If it is what it is for us all season long, we're going to struggle. Um, 
we have got to be a team that gets better throughout the season because we are so new together. Um, and the only way for that, one of the ways for that to happen is if our guys understand that um, there is, there's depth at positions. We have 11 good players and, and, and we have options. And it's not about having the guys playing in a fearful way or looking over the bench, wondering that their job's not secure. They're going to play, but they're going to get a chance to play themselves in or out of roles based on how they continue to improve and how they could treat it grow offensively and defensively. Got a follow up from Mark Murphy. Bruce, your team's like generally picked fifth in the SEC and about everything I've seen. Does this a team that should have legitimate expectations of challenging for a championship? And can that be motivating for your guys? Hey, absolutely. Um, look, we finished fifth the year, went to the final four. Um, and if you can finish in the top five of this league, you can win a national championship. You can finish the top five or six, you can win a national championship. So I think, you know, certainly um, we could be in a position to contend. Uh, but I, I would say our range is anywhere from one to nine, um, just how good the league is. Uh, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you this one, all right? This is free. Um, Mississippi State was picked eighth or ninth, right? They returned the leading rebounder in the league. They returned Molinari, first team all conference player. They brought one of Memphis's best players in. They got the preseason ACC player of the year from a year ago in Garrison Brooks. And there's one guy that I'm even missing. If that was anybody, if that was anybody else, particularly, you know, a higher profile team. That'd be a great recruiting class for Kentucky. And Kentucky's finished, you know, pick first. I'm just telling you, when Mississippi State with that roster is picked eighth or ninth, I'm just telling you, <laughs> the league is really, really good. And I've said this, I know I say it before, this is the best leagues I've been. This is the best leagues I've been. When that team is picked there. Thanks. All right, coach. That's it for today. Appreciate your time. All right, guys, thank you.